Hello there, I'm Jo from Email Hippo and I'm here to tell you all about the MailChimp Omnivore warning and what you can do to get past it. Now, when you get a MailChimp Omnivore warning, it's because you've loaded up emails onto MailChimp that MailChimp doesn't like. Uh, you think of Omnivore as MailChimp's filter. It's stopping MailChimp from dealing with rubbish data. If MailChimp has rubbish emails in its system, it can affect MailChimp's reputation and that's why Omnivore is there. It's just to stop people casting awful, ridiculous amounts of bad data to MailChimp. Think of it as your friend. Okay. Now, when you get an Omnivore warning, what it's doing is telling you that it doesn't like your emails. There's something about them that it's not happy with. Now, there are quite a few things that MailChimp uses as a filter. For instance, whether or not it's seen those email addresses before, or whether it has a problem with your IP address. Now, we can't do much about those two things, but what we can do is sort out your emails, for we are email hippo, and we're very good at what we do. So, let's assume that you are a marketer, you understand about cutting and pasting, moving columns in Excel, and you know what I mean when I say a CSV file. If those things are kind of Greek to you, as I'm using terms like that, please hop off from this video and go and look at our support documents and learn more about file types because it'll make you more comfortable with dealing with Omnivore. Right, cracking on then. So you've got a list of email addresses. Now I don't know how many is on your list but if you've got fewer than a thousand there is a very good little trick you can do which is to view your emails in an Excel spreadsheet, sort them and you'll have a really good visual check of duplicates, perhaps email addresses that are all role-based, if they're sorted alphabetically. You'll get all those info ats coming up first. Now MailChimp doesn't like role-based addresses, so if a high proportion of your email list is role-based, you, you will just continue to get on with all warnings. It's an indication of data that isn't good. It's, it's kind of a suggestion that role-based email addresses aren't opted in because they're not named. Um, and there's also the fact that role-based email addresses tend not to be, uh, have such a high open rate as named email addresses. There are quite often big buckets that just get sent lots of emails. So you can do that visual check. You can also check, like I say, for duplicates and delete any duplicates from your list. You can also have a look at syntax. The most common error in an email address is people missing the little at symbol. Now, as you're looking through your sheet, if you're finding email addresses without this symbol, just delete them. Unless you can really obviously see where the error is, just get rid. Now that's a good way, you've made a good start in cleaning your data out. And again, like I say, that's assuming you haven't got more than a thousand emails. Just sit with a cup of coffee, get it done. Once you've done that, the temptation may well be to send a blind cover copy to every email on your list. Just, you know, send it to yourself, nobody will know. Um, it's a really bad idea. If I could wave a flag right now, I would be saying, don't do that. Uh, it can affect your reputation. It can attract a lot of hard bounces to your IP address, and uh, it's really bad practice to do it. What you need to do now, regardless of whether you've got under a thousand or hundreds of thousands of email addresses, send your emails to be cleaned. Obviously, that's where we come in. We are email hippo, and we're blooming good at what we do. We're the best in the business. Uh, you upload your emails, and we validate them for you. Uh, there's all sorts of information about how we validate emails on our website and in our support documents. But basically, we check for all manner of things. We're looking for email addresses that are simply undeliverable. We look for email addresses with profanity in them, gibberish, email addresses that are actually spam traps. All the sort of things that MailChimp doesn't like, we filter. Once you download your list from us that's being cleaned up, you can see the email addresses that you basically we sort into good, bad, and we don't know. So you can see the ones to load up to MailChimp. You might actually want to segment your list and keep the, what we call unverifiables, that's we don't know, as a separate list and deal with them, maybe send them an email campaign saying, hey, are you there? Come back and get in touch. That's the sort of thing you can do when you've cleaned your emails properly and it, it just gives you more flexibility. But back to Omnivore, that's what this, is, this video is all about. Once your email addresses are clean, you can load them back up to MailChimp and it is extremely unlikely that you'll get another Omnivore warning. That's easy, it's done, it's sorted. That's how you get around an Omnivore warning and what you need to do. Um, in the long term though, 
MailChimp prefers lists that it's managing. So if you are using a double opt-in process, which every good marketer does, if you can, pop it over to MailChimp if you know they're going to be using MailChimp as an ESP and MailChimp will be far happier with your list and you really shouldn't get an omnivore warning again. So there you go. In two minutes, that's how you get rid of an omnivore warning. Just a thought. I'm saying that MailChimp knows all about emails. I have a big number for you to end on. It's the number. 24 billion, 148 million, 161,121. That's how many emails that MailChimp sent in 2016. So trust it, trust Omnivore, don't get grumpy, just clean your data. Thank you.